Sunny, the Chinese economy has been weak due to tight policy, regulation, reform of the property sector, geopolitical tensions, and more recently lockdowns following a worrying increase in COVID-19 infection rates. Is China an avoid right now? Well, certainly it feels that way. Um, but I think if you take a more medium, longer term approach, uh, the opportunities in China haven't changed. They're, the, they're still very much the same opportunity sets that have always existed. There is a trade up occurring in the consumer. Um, there are interesting things happening in terms of decarbonisation, the industrial part of China. Um, and just generally, um, you know, we, we, we feel very positive on, on many of those developments. However, in the short term, um, policy is tight um, and, and, and now it looks to be moving the other way. Uh, the government has been uh, reforming the technology sector, uh, as something that's going to happen to most technology businesses around the world. Uh, it just in the Chinese fashion has happened uh, sh- sh- uh, quickly, sh- swiftly, um, and, and now it's, you know, we'll, we'll move on. And finally, there's, there's a concern around the property sector where the government is um, squeezing out the over-indebted developers and consolidating the sector into the, qual- into the quality property developers. And finally, we do have a surge in infections, uh, COVID-19 infections. So we've seen this before where the initial phase is, is difficult for, for that economy. And as we kind of see a peak in those infections, we just start seeing a light at the end of the tunnel. But right now the tunnel does look uh, quite dark, but that doesn't t- take, it, you know, take into consideration that the long-term opportunities still remain. Um, and we are seeing evidence of government now acting um, to, to address some of these issues. Mm. In recent months, there seems to be a real change in rhetoric and policy from the top echelon of, of Chinese government. Can you take us through what you're seeing? Well, that's right. So the, the government has been looking to ease monetary policy um, since the start of this year. More recently, Vice Premier Lu He has uh, talked about more direct action um, in terms of supporting the real economy and discussions about managing the property developer risk and creating financial stability um, in, in, the, in, the property, in the property market and to, to arrest some of the declines we've seen there. We've seen mortgage rates fall across the nation. Uh, and also we are seeing um, now commentary about the regulation on, te- on the internet platforms coming to a conclusion where there will be more of a green light, red light approach. What's, a le- you know, what can you do, cannot do, which will be a healthy development for the um, platform economy. We've also had the Chinese Security Regulatory Commission modify the rules in terms of offshore listing sharing financial records. Um, so this paves a way for uh, Chinese ADRs to keep their US uh, listings. Um, So it's a willingness from the government to balance the national security issues with the needs of business. Um, So we'll we'll still have to see the US side of things, but we're seeing more of an approach. Notwithstanding, many of these companies have a path back home to China via Hong Kong listing, which we've already seen. Um, Finally, we, we have the 20th Party Congress elections at the end of this year, where the current administration will be re elected. The party has an incentive to boost economic activity, and we have seen that through tax cuts in the small to medium enterprise segment. So there are measures coming, uh, such as triple R rate cuts and further interest rate cuts, um, along with other measures to support household sector um, as the the government's looking to now stabilise the economy and, 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 you know, gearing up for an upswing. We've seen a meaningful sell-off in Chinese equities. So how are you thinking about valuations and the extent to which the market is already pricing in uncertainty? And perhaps you can touch on how this is broadly influencing the exposure to China in the global portfolios. Sure. The global portfolios have just north of 10% uh, in Chinese equities, about 12 13%. And, you know, it, it is there has been a big derating on, on, on Chinese stocks and there's been a, a large... Um, uh, repricing of equity risk premium in China. So we we do see that the current valuations are not factoring in um, much potential upside from policy change or economic stabilization, which we are seeing evidence of. Um, Some of our holdings um, are now trading at 50% of the valuation levels they were trading only 12 months ago. So there's been a big repricing 
uh, and they look mispriced, uh, we think, on a medium-term view, notwithstanding that they're going through a COVID infection cycle. So we'll, you know, they will have to manage out of that. But it doesn't take away from what we've discussed earlier that we still see a good opportunity on the medium term for many of these of these Chinese businesses. Um, so over the last few months, we've we've trimmed some of exposure on the internet platforms, and we've increased exposure on some of the dis- domestic cyclical uh, businesses in China, which will participate in an economic rebound, namely in travel and property related exposures.